picture when the, the, the flame comes through the body of the instrument. It's so wonderful. It's very artistic. Yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> Hello everybody, and welcome to the Hurdy Gurdy Cafe, an hour of interviews, music, and camaraderie. I'm Ryan, and I'll be your host along this crazy adventure through the land of the wheel fiddle. So strap in, and let's see what's cranking in the Hurdy Gurdy community today. So welcome everyone back to the Hurdy Gurdy Cafe podcast. This is the season two finale, and we have a very special guest with us today, uh, Wolfgang Weichelbaumer. Thank you for being here, Wolfgang. It's wonderful to have you. And also we have Toby Miller with us, our, our surprise um, second guest. Toby, it's wonderful to have you too. And Sergio Gonzalez, as always, here to help co uh, host the Hardy Gurdy Cafe podcast. So Hello. anyway, thank you all for being here. Uh, we've both, Sergio and I have been really looking forward to this. I'm sure a lot of listeners have as well. And um, before we get started and into the questions that we have for Wolfgang, we're going to listen to a track. And this is a track of my choosing that I've been waiting to feature on this podcast <laughs> the entire time we've been doing it. Uh, this is a track from Andre Vinogradov, and it's entitled Uzkak Po Mastu Mostu Chiku. Uh, I believe that's Russian, and I don't speak Russian, but that's the best I can do. Uh, we'll have a listen, and then we'll return with Toby, Wolfgang, and Sergio. <laughs>
So we're back again, season two, the finale of the Hurdy Gritty Cafe podcast. And we're here with Wolfgang Weichel Bomber and Toby Miller. And Wolfgang, one of the first questions that we have for you is when, why, and how did you start building Hurdy Gurdies? I have a little story to Andrei Vinokadov because the first time we had some conversation per email, and he comes from Russia, Moscow. And he ordered an instrument. And uh, after some weeks, he gave me a call and asked if I can meet him. He will drive by car from Moscow to Vienna just to shake hands with me. It's important for him to know who is building his instrument. And I was so pleased from this. So he came with his whole family, his four kids, his wife, just for 15 minutes in my workshop, and then he drove back. So, very nice. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was important for him to, to know me in person, yeah. So, <laughs> I would come visit you so, if I could. <laughs> Ryan, we have to do it. We okay. have to do it. We have to go visit uh, Wolfgang <laughs> <laughs> on the, on the uh, Hardy Gurdy Cafe tour. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> So sorry, I forgot the question you you uh, asked. Oh, how how basically how when and why did you get started building hurdy gurdies? When when did that magical moment happen? Oh, it's long time ago, more than thirty years ago. Oh, um, I grew up with wood and music, and it was also my wish, my desire to learn how to build instruments. So in this time in Austria, it was not possible to find an education for this profession. So um, I was in a school, I learned turnery, architect, and in this village, there were a lot of musicians and I met a very good player and oh. builder. It was a funny thing at this time because it was not so common then nowadays. And I had a look on this instrument, I listened to it, I, my thoughts was, wow, cool functions. But my idea of sound was totally different. So this was the beginning of a very long journey. And why? I was fascinating from the possibilities. So uh, just to explain, the, the violin for me was very fixed in the, in the shape and everything. And I was very young, I was 18 years old, and I, was, I, I have to make it in a different way and so on. And the hurdy-gurdy was for me a free field to to find new solutions. And this was very fascinating, the sound, the possibilities, and to create, to search new things. So uh, prior to, to building Hardy Gardis, uh, did you build other instruments? Yes, sure. I built a clavichord, for example, a viola da gamba, oh, nice. um, some taltumas, or what else, some vihuelas, um, uh, yes, more, yes. I All sorts of things. Like this. No, I forgot it. I, ha, I, I, my first instrument I ever made was an electric bass. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Who has that? <laughs> Do you have it? Still? I was a 12-year young boy. Ah. <laughs> and I thought, oh, it, it would be cool to play electric bass, but no money, what? no instrument. So um, I went to, uh, I don't know the English word, so we can help a, a Schrottplatz, um, a, a place a where all the... Like the a scrap, old... like a dump yes, or where they put the... scrap garbage. <laughs> okay, yes. so you, 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 you went and get the wood from the, from the garbage. No, That's so cool. <laughs> not the wood, but I found an old television, Oh. The really old stuff with the, the big ones. 
Yes, and we were three boys and we had a game to to put some stones and throw it to the television. It makes an implosion. <laughs> it's a very funny game. <laughs> oh, fun, uh, fun but dangerous. I was able to go into the, the television and um, I was searching the, the copper wire. It's from the transformator inside the television. I recycled it and found a magnet as well. And then I wound my first electromagnetic pickup. And this was the basic for the electro base. So that was my first. <laughs> bravo, <pickup>. bravo. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> I didn't know that story. I, don't know where it is. I, I lost the instrument. It, it would be fun to have it now in my workshop, but maybe I put it on the fire. I don't know. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> that, that was a piece of history, Wolfgang. <laughs> When you first yes, heard yes. <laughs> when when you first heard the hurdy gurdy and you knew that there could be a different sound, did you hear the hurdy gurdy and think that this should sound like a violin or a cello? What, I'm just trying to figure out. No one before you that I know of uh, did that. Did anyone else have this idea, or or how did it come to you that, that the sound could be different for the hurdy gurdy? Um. My, my, my thinking was not to a violin or a cello. It was since at the age of 12, since the first inst the electric bass I made, I, I heard a, a sound in my brain. I don't know why it was there. And so I had to search the instrument to this sound. It's a little bit crazy, I know, but... Mm. And since then I have the sound and I have to produce the instruments because I wasn't able to find another instrument to 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 create this sound mm -hmm. and what, what you you said you studied architecture before building was that what you was studied before music you started building musical instruments yeah this is my 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 first profession is interior architecture engineer all the technical stuff i learned to work with wood, I had a long education. It helped me a lot for the hurdy gurdy building. <laughs> but it's, it was never my, my, my wish to be an architect or some an engineer, but it was helpful, yeah. Oh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So in, I came to the hurdy gurdy late in the game and you've already been doing what you were doing. And um, uh, so when, when I first heard the hurdy gurdy, well, I've heard Nigel and I was aware of the work Nigel was doing. It, it wasn't until I heard your instrument again with that clip from Andre that my, that I said, I, this, I have to play this thing. I, I have to, I want to make music that sounds like that. So I'm kind of curious when you revolutionized the hurdy gurdy, what was the first big step? Like what, how did, what was the first move that, that made you start kind of re, how did that go? That's what I want to know. When you first started trying to figure out how to do it, what, what was that process like? Does that question make sense? Um, the first hurdy gurdy, uh, yeah, sure. The, the first one was more or less like in a French traditional style, but it was not my sound. So I had to find a solution to mm, let it more move to make it in a different way. And it, I started to rethink the bracing of the instrument. And if you think for a violin, it's totally different. And the hurdy gurdy, it's so fixed, so narrow in a traditional way that it gives another sound. And I searched at this time the, a vivid, movable sound. And the first step was to find a new bracing for the soundboard. Hmm. So that's the key, how it's braced. I mean, is that, is that your magic? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> one important part of many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see the bracing. Uh, a lot of people know what I'm doing for the bracing, <laughs> but they don't know why I'm doing it. And I changed yeah, the placing for each sound, but in a special way. And no one has the idea because I have it in my hands. Mm -hmm. So everybody can see it. It's not a secret, the placing. <laughs> 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 
So you're the you're the only one. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> how did, and how did people react when they first heard the sounds of your instruments? Because you were really the first one to create acoustic hurdy gurdies um, that have this this big sound and these dynamic possibilities. Ah yes, that's a, a, a nice story. It was in Saint Chartier. I don't know exactly the year. It was one of my first exhibitions, and on my stand I presented the instrument, and it was played uh, some people around. And one moment I I recognized that Denis Yura, a very famous hurdy maker, at this time had a look on my stand and he listened and he searched the cable and the speakers. Oh! <laughs> it was acoustic. It it's just acoustic. So he told me afterwards. So it was a very nice moment. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that you were going to have the impact on the hurdy gurdy world that you ended up having? <laughs> no. No, no. I just <laughs> It's no, no idea at all. <laughs> and um, when, you, when you do this work, I'm, I'm kind of curious, um, what kind of schedule do you have when you're building a hurdy-gurdy? Do you spend hours, a day and nights doing this, or is it more relaxed for you? I'm, I'm kind of curious how you approach the building of a hurdy-gurdy. Oh, it's day and night. It, it, it comes to my dreams. It's all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I cannot close my brain. It's... All the time, yes. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, before we move on with any other questions, uh, let's take a moment to feature uh, another one of the tracks here. And it uh, looks like we could um, feature Herman Diaz and the name of the track, it looks like it is Nimbostrato. Uh, that's my best pronunciation. Toby, do you have a better pronunciation for that? Uh, let's just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not the correct pronunciation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really, you should. I, I think it's great. Um, so we'll have a listen to that track, and then we'll return with more from Wolfgang. So let's have a listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back again to the season finale of the Hurdy Gurdy Cafe podcast season two. We're here with Sergio, Toby Miller, and Wolfgang. And um, Toby, you, ha you had a question for, for Wolfgang. Yeah, every time I come to your workshop, um, it's always really exciting because you're constantly developing and inventing new things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of us know about the more recent inventions, which you share a lot on the social media. But maybe you could tell us a bit about all the things you've invented over the years, um, that some, some of which have become actually quite standard. And maybe people don't even know that you invented them. Interesting. Yeah, I think the first big step in the inventions was the adjustable metal dangans. Hmm. Uh, it was nearly 30 years ago I made it the first time. And I can remember that the first, I don't know, five to ten years, a lot of players said this is not good, nobody needs it, and the makers say, ah, too much. But now it's standard, and I think the movable axle is mm -hmm. a very nice thing. This I made. Is the movable yeah, axle is is the movable axle is that really recent, or have you been working on that for a while? No, it, it, the movable axle is it is a simple thing mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. but very useful. But now the movable axle was just the beginning of. Some really big developments I made last year. So I, I explain it later, I think. So the invention, ah, one nice thing was the, the cotton free wheel. Of course. So yes. It, 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 really easy to play the hurdy gurdy. It works in both ways. You can use the cotton. It's a little bit more soft sound, and without the cotton, it's a little bit more uh, a bright sound. So you can choose. And for a beginner, for example, it's very comfortable to play without mm. cotton because just change a, sh a string and play. That's all. Very easy. Mm -hmm. And what about the synthetic yes. wheels, which you've been using for years? Ah, Is that also your invention? I forgot it. Yes. Yes, of course. I forgot it. Uh, also, many years ago, I searched the material to avoid the, the wooden wheels because they are not perfect round all the time. And for many years, many people uh, thought it was my secret of the sound. It was the synthetic wheels. <laughs> Just one part of many other. Wow. Yeah. And liquid rosin? Yes. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that one. I, it was so... It, it was boring for me to use the block of rosin because it was not the perfect surface for the wheel. So I thought, how can I make it liquid that the surface is perfect? And so I started it. Yeah, it works good. Very huh. simple. Interesting, so, very interesting. Yeah? Wow. You, yeah, it sounds like you've invented most of the important parts of the Hurdy Gurdy recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have, I have a question about the, the, we, the, the wheel that doesn't need cotton. Um, that surface or that texture, does that ever age or get brittle? Um, I, I've never seen one, so I have no idea, but I'm just kind of curious if, if, it, if, it, if it's a rubber or something like that, if it ever ages or has any issues like that. It's a material, it should work at least for 20 years minimum. Okay. So it, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 200 yeah. years, I don't know. Right. We will see, we will see <laughs> in the future. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. <laughs> we can well, ask later. <laughs> one one other question I have, um, because I I still completely consider myself a beginner. Um, are, are are your instruments suitable for beginners? Yes, they are, because yeah, not 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 the viola and the tenor, but the carbon girdle is really good for beginners because the movements. Are very little with the cotton free wheel it's 
very easy to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they have, the, uh, as a beginner, it, the carbon really comes with three melody strings, the trumpets, the drums. It's too much for a beginner. But if the beginner plays one melody with one trumpet, it's totally easy to play for a beginner. Of Best choice, yeah. So, so you're saying the beginners just they might get overwhelmed having all the other uh, all the other stuff going on, like extra drones and those sorts of things. Yeah, they, they have it. They can use it later. But mm -hmm. to start with cool. two or three strings, I really recommend. Yeah, of course. In, in the end, uh, the the most important thing for a for a beginner is having a, an instrument that is not very problematic. So, of course, <laughs> an instrument from the master is yeah, good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 we have been talking about a, a lot of innovations that you uh, brought over the years and those became uh, standard uh, nowadays. But, you know, uh, people uh, really like to copy stuff. <laughs> so how do you feel about uh, people trying to imitate your work or trying to copy things and discovering your uh, secrets? Um, yeah, there are no secrets. I know. <laughs> Um, but yes, the people copy it, and usually it's it's for me it's really okay. But what I really like is if the other luthier tell who invited this. For example, the the only luthier who who said thank you to me for the adjustable tank and was Claire Duquet. She came to me, said, okay, oh, thank you, Wolfgang, for this invention. It's so useful. I said, okay, thank you for mm -hmm. telling me that. And that's, I, I really like it because it doesn't hurt, but the, yeah, Pierre was the only one. You deserve and a lot many of others. I don't well. <laughs> well, I, I'm curious along the lines of that because when I think of your work, I never think anyone can copy what you do. So I'm just curious, what are some... Are, who are the other luthiers that are that have done that uh, that have copied things that you have done? Uh, are you talking about just like copying the like the tangents or or the sound? Who, who has done that? Sergio, Toby, who, who do, you, do you have any thought on thought on that? Are we calling out names? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not wanting. I'm not wanting names to make people feel bad. But what I want to know is if there are people that are actually working to do what what Wolfgang has done. In my mind, I don't. It doesn't. I don't see that. So I'm wondering who who have who has done that? Who has pulled it off? That's what I guess. That's the bigger question. Has anyone pulled it off? I don't think it's possible to copy a sound. I think a sound is something completely personal. It's like what we were talking about a few weeks ago mm -hmm. um, with te with with about teaching. That I can't mm -hmm. I can't teach a student to play, or I, I never want even somebody to learn, to play like like, like me, you, for example. right? Mm -hmm. And I think. Right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an instrument maker, but it seems to me that the sound is something incredibly personal and that's what draws me as a musician to one instrument or to another. Right. And I think that even somebody who's copying, and there are a lot of, a lot of hoody-goody makers, I'm not going to na name names. I think yeah. most people doing modern totally. instruments with this kind of big acoustic sound are copying either elements or a lot of elements. I see. Uh, Wolfgang's work. Um, at least, at least the concept of of, the concept. of, of, of Wolfgang, right? Like it, it, you, you can you can think of, you know, a, any of the modern uh, modern hardy gardy builders, like I don't know the Spanish ones, for example, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jaime or or Cesar or Hilsman. I, I, I think uh, the 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 instruments by Wolfgang really really had an impact in in those guys, and and of course. Uh, I'm I'm 99% sure they got really inspired by the sound that uh, Wolfgang has uh, created, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, I was I wasn't trying to stir any trouble. I was just curious. no, but it's, 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 <laughs> I, I don't know. It's 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 good. It's good to to know who started the the trend, you know, and and who who got in the trend, right? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Wolfgang, um, what is what is one of the most difficult aspects or the most challenging aspects of instrument making for you? Mm, good question. Ah, I think it's the if I have a new sound in, in me and to bring it 
in a body of an instrument and make it playable and mm. easy playable for the musician. It mm. doesn't have to have a wonderful sound and it's not a stable tone, it's too complicated to play. So it's a big challenge to really to follow my dreams for the acoustic, but make it possible and easy to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Very yeah. interesting. <laughs> you know, as a, you, you already know this, Wolfgang, I, I am uh, trying to learn the craft. I am trying to restore some goodies and do some, some works here and there. Uh, I am uh, curious, do you use uh, any, you know, high tech machinery like CNC or laser cutting or, or anything like that? Or, or you are more like towards the more the manual uh, job? I'm very old fashioned. Ah. I use the manual. Don't, I don't like the CNC. It's comfortable. The only thing I have with CNC is the wheel, the metal part, metal ah, part of ah. the wheel. Ah, I ordered it from a company, but I'm really in the old style and instrument work. I have to touch the wood with my hand. I have to feel it. I have to smell it. I have to hear the CNC machine makes an ugly noise. I can't work with that. So it <laughs> my workshop totally. Not possible. <laughs> It's nice. It's nice. Okay. And, and, and what is the, the, is there any, any part of the process of making a hardy gurdy that uh, you really don't like, like uh, making tangents? Because I had to make like uh, two or three sets of tangents and uh, I wanted to die, you know, like <laughs> making all the, all the foods of the tangents is very tedious for me. Uh, is there any, any process that you don't like? Yes, definitely. <laughs> the text declination. Oh! <laughs> well, what was that? What did he say? The taxes. I the tax declination. <laughs> I'm very bad in office work, so that's my my dark side of the business. Yes. <laughs> the is easy because I have a, a whole day or some days to make the tangents. It's an easy work, and uh, my brain is free. I can think what I like and make the manners. It's so easy. it's just like automatic eh, for you, like you are. At <laughs> 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 least music is okay. Everything is good. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. So we, we've been talking about your uh, modern and uh, the modern side of your instruments. But I, I know uh, you also did some copies of uh, ancient instruments uh, like uh, Louvet and, and the, the kind of instruments from the 17th uh, century that we talked uh, with Francesco the other day on the, in the podcast. So uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about that, about the Baroque uh, instruments that you also make? Yes, I really love to built Baroque instruments in a really authentic way, all the mm. head carving, all the correct materials. So it was a really nice period in the very good history, the Baroque mm -hmm. time. And Jean Louvet was my big master. I learned a lot of him to search his instruments. So it's a wonderful work, but it's not so common to, to play the Baroque instrument in a Baroque style. Now it gets more and more, that's good. Most people think it's a traditional French one and it's the same function, but it's a total different world, the Baroque one. Mm -hmm. A very, very interesting, nice world, yeah. You've built um, a lot of instruments for different professional musicians over the years. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking a lot about my Baroque instrument, which I've been playing for 16, 17 years now, I think. Um, but you've built for a lot of my colleagues and friends as well. Uh, you've built instruments for Matthias Leubner, for Hermann Diaz, who we heard before, um, and also for Valentin Clastrier. Um, and I was thinking back to that collaboration, which was which was a big a big collaboration over several years. Maybe you can tell us a bit about it, or should we just watch the movie? Oh, why why don't why don't we listen to why don't we listen to the track and then let Wolfgang uh, okay. uh, tell us about that? Sound good? Interlude. <laughs> yes, an, an interlude. Yeah. And this track is uh, from Valentin Clastrier. It's a duo. Um, and Toby, what is the pronunciation for this track? 
et la roue de la vie. Yes, let's have a listen and then we'll return with Wolfgang, Toby and Sergio and uh, have some discussions on it. <coughs> Thank you. 
All right, we're back again, season two, the season finale of the Hurdy Gurdy Cafe podcast. And uh, Wolfgang, he, Toby had uh, inspired us to ask you about um, your collaboration with Valentin. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it is a long period, a long story. In the early beginning, I was fascinated from Valentin, his music, his universe, his everything was fascinating for me. I was 18, 19 years and I enjoyed the concert. It was wow, cool. And I was, of course, afraid to talk with him all the years later. Now, the first meeting, I had my first exhibition in saint Chartier, and Valentin had a look on the stand. I was totally nervous. Oh, oh. and <laughs> I said, oh, my instrument is good, and he will like it, but he tried to say, oh, a merde. Oh, no. <laughs> I was totally destroyed. Uh, okay. That's over. My dream is over. But in the end, it, it was a, a good input from him because, I, okay, I have to change something. And then some years later, my dream was just to to meet him and talk with him and, and so on. But it was not the time. And some years later, he asked me if I'm interested to search with him a new prototype. And I was so pleased that he asked me to do that. And it was over some years a very intensive collaboration together with Toby. He was all the night sitting on the table, drinking vodka, discussing. <laughs> Toby was translating a wonderful talk and, and, and also discussing all the... It's, it's not just that we talked about Hedegurus, we talked about everything. And, uh, and the fascinating thing was, I don't speak French. I tried to learn it, but I was too lazy. But a lot of things what Valentin told me, I understood. Well, I don't know why. So he, 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 he's talking a lot. And I sitting here, listen, ah, okay, then, ah, I know. And then I gave him an answer and he was, well, you speak in French? No, no. <laughs> it was, yeah, a very nice collaboration. And so now we have personal contact. I go with my family to this place and we spend some days. Very, very nice. I, I really love Valentin. He's a wonderful musician and person. Yeah. Was it his, was it his idea? I'm sorry, go ahead, Toby. Um, I was just going to say it wasn't actually completely a joke about the movie that there is actually a documentary that was made mm -hmm. over about all of that yeah. work there exists a, a documentary uh, a movie maker made he he was more than eight years followed me in my workshop for my travels and he had i don't know hundreds of hours material of me what he filmed and so in the end he made a movie Within the Sound is the title, and in the movie, it, it shows how I work, how the musicians work. Yeah, very, very nice movie. You can find it on, on my website, there's a trailer, and on Vimeo, I think, you can find it easily, the movie. It's called Into the Sound, is that correct? Within the Sound. Within the sound, okay. The sound. Yeah. Okay. We, yeah, can, well, we can link it. Eh? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll put it in the link there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so one quick question I, I had. I, I thought it was fascinating how I saw one of Valentin's instruments and it had the sympathetic strings, but it had almost like a sitar bridge for the sympathetic strings, the bone, I guess it's bone. Um, was that his idea or was that your idea? It was Valentin's idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's very nice. It's a, it's a nice function and easy to, to make just remove the normal bridge, put in a cedar bridge. Then it's a little bit tricky because it's very fine adjustment that it works perfect. But it's mm -hmm. nice. Not all the time, but sometimes very nice. <laughs> 
I think it's a wonderful idea. <laughs> I have a, I have a, um, a, pe- a guitar pedal called the Ravish Sitar pedal. And when I plug my hurdy gurdy into it, I can make it sound like it's got those sympathetic strings on it. So that's why I was so fascinated when I finally saw that on someone's hurdy gurdy. <laughs> eh, Electroharmonics, eh? eh? Those guys has, have really nice pedals, eh, Ryan. Electroharmonics, yeah, that's yes, right. Yes, that's yes, right. That's right. Nice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so one question that I, I don't know why Sergio and I haven't asked everyone this. In fact, now we're going to ask Toby since she's here. No, no. But we're going, to, we're going to ask you first, Wolfgang. When you are not do, when you are not building hurdy gurdies, what do you do in your your free time? What do you, do you have any hobbies? Ah. <laughs> um, I really love to be in the nature, to be outside, and to make some. How to say? dangerous sport. I love paragliding, I love free climbing, I love kayaking. Ooh. It's not so dangerous. But I, I really <laughs> love it to, to, to play with the, the force of the nature, the elements, the strong elements. So it's, it's really fascinating to me to be very high on the cloud and make some funny movements and feel the power of the nature. I like to construct some boats. It's, it's wow, really? That's nice. I have a, a crazy idea I make, uh, how to say, it's a mixture between aeroplane and boat. So I have oh, wow. a shape like a bird. <laughs> you sit in it, it's with electric engine and you go over the water and you fly with connecting to the water one meter over the water very comfortable so this is the next project if i have the time <laughs> I don't know. yeah are, are you saying you want to do that or you have done that at the moment i built a simple wooden boat for the danube i live uh-huh. very close to the danube so this is easy to make but now the next step will be more difficult so yeah <laughs> well if we it, if Sergio and I come visit for the Hurdy Gurdy Cafe podcast, we want to go on this flying boat and get yes, video please. of it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that's that's amazing. <laughs> well, now now that Toby's here, Toby, what do you do in your free time? <laughs> and what are your hobbies? I think you're too late on that question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have many hobbies, but they're not nearly as interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so we should have started with you. <laughs> yeah. But maybe I can ask another question and yeah, take us okay. back to hoodie goodies. Um, I think a lot about um, the relationship that I have as a music- musician with my instrument mm. and actually how personal that is. And sometimes I think back to when I ordered my tenor um, and I have sort of a funny story, which is that oh. I went to Vienna and I tried both the tenor and the alto models and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to order. The alto is the old model before the viola, but... Um, same string length. And I tried both both instruments and I thought, oh, I like the tenor very much, but my hands are very small. I actually can't reach, I can't reach an octave on it actually. And so I thought about it quite a bit. And then I sent an email to Wolfgang and I said, okay, actually I would like to order the alto. And I had no answer to the email. I waited a couple of weeks <laughs> <laughs> and I called and I said, oh, did you get my email? And he said, yes, but I'm making you a tenor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, come back to Vienna the next time and I'll measure your hands and we'll find a way to make a tenor keyboard that you can play, but this is the instrument for you. Huh. And we did that. I went back the next time. Um, it was a time when I was really, I was quite often in Vienna for different projects. We measured my hands and, and then I had this tenor. And I remember the first notes I played on this instrument, I really had tears in my eyes and mm. I'm, not, I'm not somebody who cries easily, huh? wow. but I was, I was so moved by the sound of this instrument oh. and I really thought, this is my voice, this is the sound that I was looking for. So it was, for me, it was a really moving experience and also to know that the pers- actually the person building my instrument knew better than I did what I, <laughs> what I needed. Mm. So that's a long story to ask from the instrument maker's perspective, how do you see the relationship between the musician, the instrument and the luthier? Yes, that's for me that's a big that's it's a big thing i think yes it is because uh the musicians they trust me a lot that i make good thing so it's 
it's a honor for me that that they give me the order and saying, okay, in one, two, three years, they have a good instrument. They, they don't know what I'm doing. Um, and a, a very interesting thing is the, I like to, um, how to say in English, to observe, beobachten. Mm -hmm. uh, to observe. I, I observe the musicians if they give me an order and I listen and I, I try to get an idea what is good for the musician, what they, what they like to play to go further in their life. It's, it's, a, it's a very intimate process, a very delicate thing. Um, and if if I find the correct balance between the, uh, how to say, the, um, a, a really good instrument is not the most easy common thing in the first moment. It needs a little bit uh, <clears throat> a work from the musician and the instrument. So it's, it's a delicate moment uh, how much I'm allowed to, to how to say, fordern? What is fordern? To um, push or challenge? No. It's, uh, if you make it too easy to the musician, it can be boring. The <laughs> <laughs> musician. <laughs> it cannot go further. We have to find the balance. And that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and then I have to help them to, to find their own way because each musician plays the instrument in a very personal way. Nothing is the same. So they touch it in another way and they have some totally different problems. And so I'm always happy if they come to me, ask me, contact me. Oh, that's the problem. What can I do? Some people are afraid to do this, but I, I say it again and again, ask me, I can help you. Because it's so important to have some small tips. For me, it's easy. But for some musicians, it's a disaster. And say, oh, try this, and it works. So it's a very, very nice personal thing. Interesting, yeah. That's just got me thinking about all kinds of stuff now. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know where to go from there. <laughs> what you Fine. I have a little surprise for you. Oh, oh no. Yes. Look at that. Look at uh, hold on. Let me pin your video. I want to see this a little bit better. Okay. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. That's lovely. <laughs> So Sergio and Toby, those of you who don't know, a while back, I, I, I decided I was just going to have uh, ask um, Wolfgang to to build me an instrument. <laughs> what? Ryan. Wow, bravo. Yeah. I, I, I decided that life was too short and you might as well play what you want to play. And that's what I always wanted to play. So <laughs> that's uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. <laughs> This is so good, Ryan. I'm so happy for both of you. <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 I had asked him about um, making the, the, the color of the wood um, like a, a grayish or charcoal to kind of match the, um, uh, to match the carbon fiber. It, it, ah, it, yeah. I was so just going to say that the color is very nice. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, that leads me to one wide question for you. Uh, when, for people who are curious, with the carbon fiber body, um, does that have any major change on the sound or the volume of the instruments compared to your wood instruments? No, it's okay. It's very close to the big viola, not exactly the same. It's a little bit more simple in sound, but less than half the work in adjustment. So okay. Oh. In the frequency, it's a very big difference. In sound, it is a little, but not so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a very good solution. 
to make it easy for the musician because the movement of the carbon fiber is very little. It's very stable, very tough thing, good material. So it makes it more easy. Excellent. You heard a good player. <laughs> That's good. That's what I need. I need a little more easiness. <laughs> Well, I don't, you know, you guys need to take over from here because now I'm just too excited <laughs> from seeing that. <laughs> so, Sergio, you fire away for Wolfgang. <laughs> I, I am also too excited. <laughs> but, but, but now that you are showing things, I am seeing something behind you, something new and very interesting. Uh, is that, a, how do you call it, a fretted uh, oh. hardy How do you call it? <laughs> Show us. The slide girdy, what is slide girdy? You call it slidey, like yeah? <laughs> oh, a slide girdy, that's great. How cool is that? Ah, it's, it's also carbon. Is it? Yes, it, it's it's full carbon. Cool. Wow. So, and I I, I put some frets in an Eastern style on it. Hey, you can do you can go microtonal, eh? There, nice. Yes. Not me, but the instrument. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can try to play it, if you like. Yes, 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 please. But Some notes. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear it with the, the bad microphones from the PC, but let, let's, let's see. So, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Hey, nice. so cool. Very funny to play. I, that is fantastic. This is so cool. I always uh, struggle to play uh, quarter tones because, I, you know, I play uh, quite often a lot of uh, macam music. And uh, with the gurdi, I always have to try and adjust the tangents eh, to, to, to get the, the quarter tones. But with this, how easy, how nice. Okay. I love it. I love it. You I can love play it. some chords of, with two oh. strings or three strings. You can really play chords. Very, very nice. nice. Funny thing. Very do, you, nice. Very do, you, do you usually, is it the position that you played it in, you had it across your lap? Is that the way to play it? I mean, could it ever be played almost like a guitar held up? Or is, I've never seen an instrument like that. I prefer this position. It's more relaxed for my hand. Mm -hmm. A lot of possibilities, but I play it like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remembered something that, that Toby and I talked, or Toby and Sergio and I talked about, and it, it's related to this question about: um, Do you have any um, apprentices or assistants in your workshop? No. no is that it, huh. is that because they scared Toby? Oh, oh, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had some over the years, but. You need a lot of a lot of patience to make the hurdle good is and all the time after half an year or one year the workers said okay it's too much for me my nerves are out of work <laughs> I I ask for high precision work so I cannot accept some lazy work. So here, no, I'm really no. clear. And if they can't bring it, I prefer to make it alone. And I'm slow in producing, yes, but for me, the quality is the most important thing. And if the worker cannot give me the quality, it does not make sense. Yeah. 
<laughs> so the, the, was it, was the problem that they didn't have the patience to learn how to build it? Or was the problem that you didn't have the patience for them? <laughs> Or both, maybe. <laughs> maybe both. Maybe both. <laughs> we need more time to teach them how to make it. I, I do it by myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm. and I'm not a teacher at all, I think. So, right. <clears throat> well, let's listen to, oh, go ahead. Did you have something else to add? Okay, um, let's go ahead and listen to, uh, let's see, no, did we go through all of them already? No, we don't want to, we don't want to stop yet. Okay, we're, we're not going to listen to the, that final track yet because we have a, a lot more to talk about. And um, uh, Wolfgang, <clears throat> you had mentioned asking people at the Hurdy Gurdy community if they had questions for you. So they did send some questions and I'm going to go over there right now and start at the top um, <clears throat> and Ron, <clears throat> Ron Helene um, has a question. Um, let's see. His question was, how do you know how many instruments you have built over the past 30 years? Not really. No. Maybe, oh. I think five to six hundreds. Wow. Oh. Yeah. And his, his other question was, I recently found a picture of an alto with five melody strings. Why? <laughs> and, and, and why do your models now have three um, in, instead of more strings? I think that's the question he was asking. The five melody strings is because some musicians ask me. <laughs> and the three <laughs> melody strings is because I prefer two. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's too much. It's possible, but it doesn't make sense for me. It's possible, but for what? I don't know. I made, I think, three or four altos. Does it affect the sound or just playability to have more than three strings? Yes. If you have five strings or even four, it is more more force on the soundboard. The more strings mm. for the melody it you have, less. the harder is the, the bridge to the soundboard. And uh, I cannot create the perfect sound with four strings. Oh. It's a compromise. But mm. I prefer the perfect sound. And three strings is, if I'm good in the brain for transformation, it's OK with three strings. OK, it's easy to have a, a D as f string, but it's not necessary for me. For me, the sound is the important thing. And with three melody strings, the sound is much better than with four. Mm -hmm. It's the main reason. Mm -hmm. And um, another question from Courtney Kraft. Uh, she wanted to know, I don't think we touched upon this yet. She wanted to know, what do you want uh, a client or a musician to know before they order an instrument from you? Is there anything that you want someone to, to know about you or your work or how it happens before they order an instrument from you? Um, good question. That's a good one. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's good to, to, it's not so important to, to write long emails. <laughs> I'm not a good writer. Okay. But it's, it's, uh, for example, a picture where most of the time I know a little bit about the person. If there's something in the internet, it's helpful for me. If I can see what style of music are they playing or what they like. Just uh, Nowadays, it's easy in the internet to find some information. And this is very helpful. <laughs> Nothing special I need. So just just some some pictures, some ideas. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever refused to build an instrument for somebody? <laughs> oh. <laughs> have you ever said no, I'm not building an instrument for you to someone? Have you oh, yes. Oh, yes, of course. What 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 prompts that? Uh, I'm just curious. <laughs> crazy customers, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It was a disaster. It was very, uh, it was not good in the, at all. So 
I told him it's better to play flute or something. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, <laughs> that's good. Uh, so a question from John Dingley. I think you've probably been asked this before, and I doubt you're going to tell us the answer to it, but he asked, what is the rim of your non-rosin wheel made of? A lot of different materials. Hmm. It's different layers and the mixture of many things. And I, 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 I need more than 120 wheels to find the perfect solution. So it, 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 it's a too long story to tell everything what is necessary to make it in a good way. It's, it's very complicated, I had a collaboration with some nanotechnologists to search with the very good microscopes to go into the structure to find mm. the perfect mixture of materials to make it possible. So it's a very long journey for the material. Right, right. And um, I think we're getting close to our time. And Sergio, you usually have a question that you fire off to all of our guests. Uh, do you remember that question? Would you like to ask uh, Wolfgang? Uh, oh, yes, the top players. Eh? Okay, okay, okay. I, I, for, a, for a second, I forgot. I... <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm, you know, I'm very interested in this. Okay, uh, Wolfgang. Who are your top five or top whatever uh, musicians that you like? For the Hurdy Gurdy as well, Ye in general. Yes. Maybe, maybe Hurdy Gurdy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hurdy Gurdy. Okay. Yes. It's not so difficult. It's Valentin, it's Toby, it's Shaman, it's Romain. But uh, there are so many very good musicians so mm -hmm. excuse all others that, uh, it's too too quick question for me many good players <laughs> <laughs> what about makers are there any makers oh, uh, aside, aside from yourself that you really you, you kind of like when you see what they're building are you inspired or do you have any favorite hurdy-gurdy makers aside from yourself <laughs> yes of course I mentioned it before, Jean Louvet. Ah, Jean Louvet, of course. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. If, if I were you, I think I would just like what I made. <laughs> I think that Jean Louvet um, had really a similar effect in the 18th century. I mean, mm -hmm. he really, he wasn't the first to revolutionize the instrument um, mm -hmm. in the sense that he's really coming at the end of, of several generations and of um, a pretty goody makers, but he was really the one who brought the instrument to its highest point at that mm. at that time. And there are references to him um, in the treatises in the method books of the time, saying, "Well, if you want a really good instrument, go to see Mr. Louvet." It could also have been uh, been Pierre Louvet, who's a generation earlier, mm -hmm. but most likely Jean Louvet, and even saying that he's the one who manages to build a wheel that stays round. Oh, so, <laughs> um, I think the hurdy gurdy went through really a similar um, revolution uh, in revolution in the sense of development, not, <laughs> not <Yeah. laughs> in the 18th century as it has. I was about to say in the 20th century, but I guess that's uh, that ship is yet in the 20th and 21st century um, nice. in our lifetime. So and I think the interesting parallel actually. I think we have time for one more question from the, the Hurdy Gurdy community, and this is from Margarita Rankin. She asked, um, "Will do you think, or could there ever be a guitar level ease of maintenance Hurdy Gurdy?" I think what she means is, could there ever be, you know, you just pick up your guitar and play, it and that's it. Can, can there ever be a, 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 a Hurdy Gurdy that is is that easy to maintain? Do you think that's possible? Yes, it is. I think so, because I, I studied classical guitar by myself and I know how complicated it is to find a good sound, all the stuff with the nails, to polish it, to find the strings. It's, it's, for me, it's more easy to adjust the hurdy gurdy mm. to make the perfect sound on a classical mm. guitar. It's very complicated and difficult. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think it is possible. <laughs> That's good. Especially with the cotton. Because the mm-hmm. cotton is such a tricky topic. And this outcome, yes. just you need to play it ready. That's all. Yeah. And it's true it's also that the ad- adjustable melody bridge, um, which we didn't ah, talk yes. about when we talked about inventions, that that also changes so much. It makes it so much yes. easier. Yeah. Everything. Yes, yes. Yeah. What do, wait, wait. What, what is this adjustable melody bridge? <laughs> you have to... It's not only the height because the sound board is moving with the humidity. Okay. And I have in the bridge two mechanisms to oh. regulate the height. And also, as many people did not know that, that I can adjust the intonation, the position of the bridge. I can bend it really back and straight. That's very important. Mm-hmm. So there are two mechanisms in one. Okay, so you're talking about the bridge that holds the strings. It's got like the thumb screws. Yes. Right. Okay, okay. I, I thought maybe I was missing something. All right. Well, we're getting near the end of our time. Do you, Sergio, or uh, Toby, any final thoughts or questions for, for Wolfgang before we finish up today? Well, I wanted to ask a bit about the organized hoodie goodie. Oh, yes, yes, please. Yes, so, yes, so, yes, yes, please. So maybe this, maybe <laughs> this would be the time. Um, yes. Who, where to, where to even to start? Um, <laughs> that was a huge project for yes. you, and it's now, it's now many, many years ago. And as I remember it, um, it was just, it was a, it was a huge project and also a really crazy project that um, took a lot of time. And a lot of energy and involved fire, involved your thumb. What? <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about this. Yeah, it was a very, it's, it took me more than one year to, I worked more than 80 hours a week, no free days. And it was, the funny thing, the, the disc called Delirium, and I was in a delirium, more or less. And... I had one little organizer nearly finished and I thought, no, it was not a good way. And at this time I had a very good symposium on my Hmm. place. I invited a lot of musicians to meet and cook and have fun some days. And on the evening I made a fire in the garden and I put the little organizer in the fire. Oh, no. (laughs) Because I had a new idea to go further. It was it was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> All the people freaking out, like no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the only instrument that you've burned? It's <laughs> a good one. And then, no, I, no, met three times. It's, I had a favor <laughs> for burn some things. Yes, it's it's big fun. <laughs> it's not good enough to have to put it in the fire because the wood is very dry wood, it's very thin, it burns really nice. And, and the, the picture when the, the, the flame comes through the body of the instrument, it's so wonderful. It's very artistic. Yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> do, do, you, do you have any pictures or videos of that? Nothing, no. No. It's well, next, next time you burn it, you should get a video and put it on your Instagram and see how people respond. <laughs> this is nowadays, but I prefer these special movements to just to be in the real life without video, without anything, just the people, they are here and they have the celebration. This I prefer. Yes, yes. It's sometimes too much for me. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how about you, Sergio? Do you have any final questions for Wolfgang? No, no, I want to know more about the leader. <laughs> <laughs> because I the, the last thing I saw is that you were building a massive uh, low 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 uh, note right for the like forty hertz or something like that. And the organ um, pipes. Uh, yeah. The organ pipes, yes. That was like I need I to try this. Twenty three hertz, no twenty four hertz and thirty two hertz. Hmm. Wow, it's, when you play a, that, a very low C and the very low G. Wow, it's it's amazing. It's but it's a lot of sound and in combination with my slide girdy, it's very wonderful to play. It's it's a new universe. It's big fun. So nice. 
There's no big nice. pipes. Very, very, very low. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well, that will, I think, bring us to the end of our time together and the end of the second season of the Hurdy Gurdy Cafe podcast. And again, Wolfgang, thank you so much for, for being here today. And um, thank you so much for the instruments that you build. You know, as I mentioned, it was because of hearing your instruments that made me decide I'm going to quit playing guitar. I'm going to quit playing mandolin. And all I'm going to do is focus on the hurdy-gurdy. So thank you <laughs> for that. And um, yes. <clears throat> and Toby and Sergio, it's wonderful to see you both again. So thank you for being here. And again, it's just th this whole hurdy-gurdy community, I have to say, um, of everyone that we've met, of everyone that we've talked to, I, I want to go and spend time with every one of you. So thank you all for being just wonderful people. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. And um, when we go out today, we are going to be listening to, this is, um, is this the Lira Organizata? Yes. And this is Toby Miller, Matthias Leubner, and Thierry Nuat. And um, this is a piece by F.J. Haydn. Um, was there anything either uh, Toby or um, Wolfgang you would like to say about this b before we listen to it? No, just listen to it. <laughs> music. <Come> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, then we'll let it speak for itself. So, again, thank you all for being here, and um, we'll see you again next time. Take care. Bravo. <laughs>
Thank you.